Hey guys, my name is Peter. Some of you guys might know me under the name The Master of Puppets, and some of you guys have no idea who I am, but I run a blog on YouTube, The Master of Puppets. You probably saw me, if you've been to NBCC, walking around with a camera, filming me drinking beer and having fun, and filming the extravaganza of this great festival. But the guys at McKellar wanted me to check out their beer mail for the month of January. So they're kind enough to ship out this box, and I think they picked out some pretty fun beers to try. So if you don't know the McKellar beer mail, it's a new thing McKellar started where they're shipping out a beer mail for you every month. I think it's only uh, 300 kroners at the moment and you can even get a 50% discount if you refer a friend. And it comes with this little cool thing that says, you've got mail, or McKellar beer mail, uh, which is a little folder with info on all the beers that you get in their beer mail box, which is really cool. And as you see here, that's all the beers in there. So let's try them and see how they're like. So this one is a McKellar Classic. This is American Dream. They're 4.6% steam beer. It's kind of like inspired by the steam beers, or I guess you call it California Commons, from San Francisco uh, in that area. Anchor Steam being the famous one. And I, I really actually haven't had this beer in pretty much years, but it's one of the classic McKellar beers. They've been doing it for quite a while. And it's a bit more hoppy than your average lager. Uh, it looks very nice and glass. It smells very nice. It's got like the classic kind of American citrus hop aroma to it. It's almost like almost bordering into an IPL type territory because it's quite hoppy actually. <laughs> I know this is for January, uh, but this would be perfect in the summer <laughs> instead of the dead of winter. Well, this is a slogger. It's got the clean lager yeast profile you'll find in lagers. But then you've got the kick of American hops, which is why I guess it's called American Dream, right? <laughs> um, quite, quite nice popping hop profile of citrusy and grapefruity hops, some pine as well. It's, it's maybe not entirely IPL-like, but it's quite nice. So let's see the next beer here, guys. This is one of the newcomers. This is uh, Weird Weather. It's a series of beer McCullers done, a series of the uh, hoppy beers, New England inspired. They have uh, a New England IPA, and then they have a New England IPA with lactose and then a version that's a double IPA. And this is the single IPA version, 6.7%. And that looks like a New England IPA, you know. It's got that haze, the haze craze everyone's talking about. Let's check it out. Oh yeah, that smells really nice. Really pineapple -y, but I'm also getting like lots of lemon and, and lemon rind characters. It's very juicy and punchy. It's, I, I know it's a very trendy style at the moment and I really enjoy myself, so cheers. That's what I love about New England style IPAs. They're so easy, freaking drinkable. I will say though, I think some of the best New England IPAs they produced at McKellar has been from McKellar San Diego, their facility over in San Diego, but also at Warpix in Copenhagen. But this is really nice. It's made with rye, uh, barley malt, and uh, oat flakes, wheat malt, and rye malt as well. Super drinkable for almost 7%. You got a little bit of a classic grapefruit vibe going on, but also with some citrus, uh, other citrus characters, like some bit of sweet citrus, but I'm getting lots of pineapple on it, like juicy, fruity pineapple. Okay, so this beer is one of their sours. So if you don't know, they're drinking in, uh, I think it started drinking in the sun, then drinking in the winter, and then drinking in Berliner. So they're a low alcohol series of beer. They've been doing it for years right now. I think the very first one was the drinking in the sun which was like a low ABV kind of pale ale type thing. But this is a 2.7% Berliner Weiser with passion fruit, uh, which is really nice. 2% of the beer is passion fruit actually. So this will be fun. I, I do like a Berliner Weiser and I do like sours a lot. Limey, lemony, but there's definitely passion fruit aromas on it. Very clear as well, like super golden. Mm, it smells, it smells quite nice, uh, very refreshing. More lactic and sour than I like remember their drinking in Berliner series or drinking in sours. I think they've made a couple, but let's try it. Oh, that's really refreshing. More lactic sourness to it than I actually imagined at first. Not too bad though. It's not like so much you get like sour. I don't know if you guys ever try that when you get so much sour beer or beer that are really sour that it starts giving you like the sour belly type feeling. Like you can feel the sourness going down almost. It's not like that. It's like really sour passion fruit flavor with like lactic sourness. I enjoy it, but it's not my favorite sours they do. I mean, the ones I prefer the most from McKellar and Sours are their Spontan series. Those are, those are great. More new McKellar beer. This is a series they just released, 
which is really cool to see in the box. This is their new hop project uh, called the Hop Terrar series. And it's a series of IPA that showcases the different flavor profiles you can get in hops when they're grown in different regions. Because you know, like wine is all about, they talk so much about terroir uh, in terms of grapes, where the grapes are from. This is pretty much the same thing, just in terms of where the hops are from. Because there is apparently somewhat of a difference depending on where the hops were grown. Some people like even talk like the flavor of Nelson Sauvin, the specific flavors you get is quite unique because of the soil in New Zealand where it's grown. So this is the Cascade version with the uh, Cascade hops from Washington in the US. So Cascade hops, it's classic American hops. Uh, ABV on this is 6.8 and I, I'm not entirely sure, but I think they're New England inspired as well, but we'll find out once we get it poured if it's, yeah, <laughs> very much so. That's that's quite hazy. Okay, hey, and this has also got rye, I see, and I think all of these have the same base beer pretty much. So barley malt, oat flakes, rye malt, and wheat, hops and yeast, Cascade. I don't think, oh, that looks very nice. I don't think I've had a Cascade beer, like single Cascade beer in ages, so let's check it out. Oh, like piney, citrus, almost like aloe, aloe vera I'm getting for some reason. Pine, earthy, wow. That's, I remember escaping loads of grapefruit. There's some grapefruit on the back end for sure, but pine and earthiness, and it has some like some wheaty, wheaty crisp, crispness. Hmm? Quite refreshing. But I must say, newer modern hops has definitely outshone it a bit. It's, it's almost got like that. Sometimes you can get that from some hops, like an almost, um, like, I don't know if I want to say rubbery, but like it's like this almost like rubber like flavor. It's a bit weird, but it, it tastes really old school, but New England style, which is kind of interesting. And while we're at it, well, let's move on to the other Toa beer in here. The another Hop Toa series beer. This is Amarillo, it's also 6.8%, and an exact same malt backbone and everything. I think this guy is inspired by the other series that McKellar has done. They did a hop series back in the day. I actually did the entire first single hop IPA series on my YouTube channel, The Master of Hoppets. So if you want to check that out, you can see it on there. But uh, that was a fun experiment. Oh, much more orange. That's one of the key things I think of when I think uh, I'm really like lots of orange. Really refreshing smell. Let's try it. Yeah, I much prefer that to Cascade. It's more juicy, slightly tropical vibes going on, but tangerine, sweet citrus, mandarin oranges, orange, citrus fruit galore. It's really nice. The Cascade is more classic, whereas this is a bit more to the new school haze of the days trend. Got some bottles, not only cans in this box, guys. This is McKellar's Porter. They're Imperial Porter on 8% uh, with dark cristinati sugar. I, I don't think I ever tried this one, to be honest. It's one of those beers they did, they've done it for a while, but I, I don't think I, I checked it out, or at least, you know, like did a review or something of it. But, hey, we'll check it out. Oh, I can smell the roastiness from here. Yeah, roasty, chocolatey, coffee forward. My head is really getting in the way for me picking up proper aromas, but it smells nice, what I'm getting. Almost like a bit of a hint of a vanilla note. Let's try it. Oh, much sweeter than I expected. Sweet, like coffee, chocolatey pro profile. Nice sharp roastiness without being crazy. Really easy drinkable for 8% actually. Mm. It's very reminiscent of their Christmas Porter, just without the spicing and a heavier roast profile actually. And speaking of Christmas beer, to from Via or Til Fra Via. One of the Christmas beers they've done for quite a while, I think one of the original McKellar beers actually. They change up the recipes for this a bit every year, change up the spices. I believe this one has a star anise, clove, cinnamon, and coriander seeds. Uh, because I actually just reviewed this on my YouTube channel. And vanilla sugar. Uh, but this is a classic. I always like to get this every year along with Santa's Little Helper. And as you see, it's like the exact same color pretty much as the McKellar Imperial Porter. But 
yeah, it's got a bit of a festive vibe going on. I'm definitely getting clove. It's reminding me of Danish, uh, you know, uh, Christmas cookies, bone uh, uh, or piwanula. I guess it's like kind of like gingerbread almost, but it's not like crazy intense. It's balanced because you get the stouty or porbery, roasty, burnt notes underneath some coffee. This is good if you have like post-traumatic Christmas syndrome and need you, your Christmas fix even though it's January. This is quite nice. And also because it's not just like, it's not crazy festive. So it's like quite, you know, like some of the Christmas beers get so crazy with the spices, they're like insane. This is more balanced. You get the actual base beer, like the roastiness and the kind of like chocolatey flavors. It's quite velvety on the mouthfeel as well. But then you also get the spice. You get that kind of gingerbread cookie or pionil, bunke, as we say it in Danish. Tasty stuff. And I think most of you guys already know that I'm always happy to have a bottle of Beer Geek Breakfast. <laughs> this is a classic, this is a beer that put Mikkel on the map, uh, pretty much. And, you know, we have to drink that up out of the, the old school McKellar glass. <laughs> they used to have them at all the bars, uh, pretty much. So yeah, this is their uh, milk stout, or oatmeal, not milk stout, oatmeal stout brewed with coffee. And uh, they've done many variations on it since I think one of the ones that really got recognition in the, back in the early days was the Weasel, which is still a great coffee and barrel stout. I really love uh, Beer Geek Brunch Weasel. But they are doing so many variants on this right now and they're really nice. Like <laughs> they did uh, recently the Vanilla Shake uh, again and then they did a Barrel Ace version. They did Coca Shake and then they did Vanilla Maple Shake and then now they, they just released Vanilla Maple Coca Shake. Uh, which is great. I think this is like 7.8% breakfast stout, as you call it, or 7.5, that's, that's right, with the uh, oat roasted barley, hops, yeast, gourmet coffee. But a McKellar classic, if you've never had this, this would just be one of the good reasons to get the beer mail, just because this is a classic beer from McKellar. Uh, and a great beer nonetheless that's pitch black and nice looking in the old school McKellar glass. Well, let's check it out. Oh, loads of coffee. This is one of the beers I always like to revisit. Uh, like, especially the variations. One of my all-time favorite McKellar beers is like the Vanilla Shake beers. And the, in general, the Beer Geek series is my favorite that Mikkel has ever done. But, yeah, loads of coffee. I'm even getting hints of vanilla in this, but surprisingly, it's more hoppy than I remember when I had it last. But let's try it. Cheers. Mmm. Oh, yeah, that's a classic McKellar beer, like some green coffee flavor, like green coffee beans almost with espresso type coffee as well, roastiness, uh, dark chocolate richness, a little bit of a burnt note in the end as well, and like nice sweetness from the oats, nice stuff. So guys, I definitely recommend you guys hopping onto the McKellar web shop and checking out the McKellar beer mail. It's a pretty cool deal where you get all these eight, I believe it was, right, different beers. Uh, to check out every month and uh, it's very well priced as well and I must say the selection this time has been pretty good and I even saw I think the last couple of times they also had like Plea Fontaine and some other breweries beers in there so it's not always only McKellar but uh, yeah where's the shot guys and that was my two cents on the McKellar beer mail thanks a ton to the guys at McKellar for uh, having me try this I have loads of beer to drink right now which will be good but luckily I have some friends over who will be happy to share it with me and hopefully I will see you at MBCC 2018 cheers